Okay. <clears throat> so this one has got a little leak back here in the boot. You see it? It's right there. A little leak. And you can see the mineral trail. And so anyway, what we're going to do is first we pull this. And this is the keeper. Oh, this keeps this uh, front part on. Pull this loose. And then we're going to disconnect the motor, or excuse me, the uh, door lock switch. And we're going to pull this off, and then I'll show you how to fix it. Oh, it's actually got a rip up here. It's got several several rips. A rip right there. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to sew it up. And I, I, what I do is I sew it up with regular needle and thread. And then I coat it with E6000. It's like uh, super heavy duty industrial strength rubber cement. And that's what I do. This one here has got a little bit of slop in the barrel, but it's still working. If you lift up here and you're, you hear a big kind of clunk, this is like a wheel bearing in the side here. If you, you've got slop at the end of your wheel bearing, then that bearing's shot. Some machines will not spin if this uh, bearing has got too much slop in it. Um, if you got slop in your bearing, you got noises, you're going to be running into problems sooner than later. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get back to this gasket here, see what we can do. We're going to have to take this whole front off in order to pull this off correctly. And so, get the screws here, there, and there's the model number. And we're going to take this off, we got to take this off, and then we got to take the front panel off. Okay, so what I've decided to do, I'm going to just go ahead and leave the back part of this boot on because it's kind of a hassle to pull off. You have to pull this whole front off. Uh, this one has the special Torx uh, screws on it, I think. It's kind of a hassle. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sew this thing up. Uh, you can go to your uh, Dollar Tree and get a little dollar sewing kit. You want to make sure that's nice and clean in there. Um, some of these you can actually take a bicycle inner tube repair kit and repair them that way uh, but you got to clamp them so this one we're just going to sew together here and we're going to fill it with e we're going to smear e6000 uh, industrial rubber cement on it okay so we have this patch kit and so basically i've cut these little patches up you use a rubber cement here for these small ones we have some small holes right here and there and we'll just put little patches over those holes and then we'll put E6000 in back of it um, those are not too big of a hole but they are pretty big holes I mean they'll definitely leak water what I think happened is this thing just got it bounced around maybe they had a big really big load in it or something or it wasn't the machine wasn't perfectly balanced flat and this thing kind of hit up against the side and caused that problem um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to sew this up here and then I'll put these patches, small rubber patches, over the smaller ones. And we still got this one. This one, probably need to sew that one. That one's, I mean I could probably put a patch over that. We got a big patch here. This patch here could probably work over that. You just got to make sure it's lined up. And then when we put that on then, that would make it easier. This one down here has got to be sewn though. That one there is no way to patch that one. Okay, well let's start sewing it. I actually have this. This is the whatever, the fishing uh, line. And the heavy duty whatever embroidery needle we could use. But actually we're going to use a smaller needle and thread. Um, or this rip here. We'll sew it first, and then we'll uh, we'll patch it with it. Okay, so these things definitely come in handy when you're threading a small needle like these here. Um, and so I've sewn this one here because it's kind of right on a bend. You can't really put a patch on a fl uh, bended surface very easily. You probably could if you clamped it right. But it's not like professional sew job, but we don't really need it to have a professional. The main thing you want to kind of keep it even so that it's not leaving a bigger gap, making any bigger gaps in the in the boot. And then so once we've got that set, what we're going to do is we're going to take the E6000 
and we're going to smear it on both sides. We may put two coats on that. Um, so, yeah, that's how I do that. Okay, so here's what this one's looking like. It's starting to look like. Um, it's halfway sewed up. Still got some tricky edges to sew up. This one's already sewed up, and I'm going to put some more E6000 over it. These small ones here, I just E6000, and I think they'll be fine just the way they are. Uh, I'll put another coat of the E6000 on it. It's actually can see through that but it's pretty much glue put some more on that and I don't see any more breaks anywhere else and uh, I think we should be good just need to finish this major rip here and then put some E6000 on it thanks for watching if you need any help you can contact me I give phone advice for $35 707-443-8347 Pacific Time you can also send me an email, mrmaintain at hotmail.com. M-R-M-A-I-N-T-A-I-N at hotmail. Thanks for watching. Okay, final product. <laughs> you look at this. You can see how it looks. Looks pretty good right there. And I'm putting double coats on this stuff too. So... So these over here have got triple coats on them actually. The one down here has only got like a double coat. But I'm probably going to put some more on. More on. Get it? Um, but anyway, that's that Frankenstein gasket looks like. Once the E6000 permeates that thread, that thread is like uh, heavy duty stuff right there. And so it looks like what happened is this thing here got just got overloaded and that that front seal got it banged up against the or the basket banged up against the front or it could have been I don't know laid on its front or something anyway there's your disclaimer thanks for watching please rate comment and subscribe how much do I trust the E6000 well this is what happened was I ran over a tailpipe and it stab my tire it's not recommended to put a patch on a sidewall it's probably pretty dangerous anyway they have these radial patches as well so you got to clean this stuff up real good take some sandpaper clean it up and uh, this has actually got the regular neoprene cement on it this has actually been sewed up that's been sewed up with 40 pound uh, test line um, uh, 40 pound fishing uh, fishing line it's been sewed up with this stuff here I put about 8 stitches in it then I put this this bead patch in here whatever you want to call it and it's a radial patch and I'm going to put some more E6000 over this whole thing that might work but you know last resort you need a tire gotta go somewhere you know, it's just an experiment in my world. Could be hazardous in yours.